In this video, we are going to go back to the basics of vectors. So this might be a review if you didn't quite understand what a vector was, or this might be the first time you've seen or heard the word of a vector. So I'm just going to do a basic video of what uh, vectors are all about. So a vector is a mathematical way of describing some journey. So if you have a boat that goes from some point in the ocean to another point, that is that can be expressed as a vector because it would travel some distance in some direction. And that's actually the two components that any vector needs to have. The definition of a vector is it's something that has a magnitude. So magnitude. And another word for magnitude is a size or length. So a size or length, and it needs to have a direction. So things that have a size and length, which is a magnitude, and a direction, they are vectors. So if you have uh, if you have looked at speed and distance, and you've thought about well, what, what's a speed and what's a distance, well, a distance is just some arbitrary length, and a speed is just how quickly you, you travel. But velocity and displacement, they are actually vectors. If you have done physics or, or kinematics in class, uh, velocity is is a is a speed but in a direction, and displacement is a is a length but in a direction. So vectors are very important. Uh, in my example here, I'm just going to show you how some easy IB exam questions introduce uh, vectors and the basics of vectors. So if I have some coordinates p, q, r, and s, and I've, I've given them here, and it's in the shape of a parallelogram. What a vector can do is it can demonstrate, for example, vector A here, it can demonstrate the journey from one point to another point. So in this question, or this diagram here, I've defined the journey that starts from P, that travels up to Q, that is going to be a vector, and it's going to be the vector A. And in textbooks, they, they use vectors as, as a lowercase letter that's often bolded, so you might see this to be a bold A. In your exam, you can you can express your vector maybe with an A with a little hat or A with an arrow. These are different ways you can express your vector. So typically coordinates are capital letters and the journey that connects coordinates will be a vector and that'll be a lowercase letter. So in this diagram here, the vector A will be from P to Q and that's actually different to the vector that would go from Q to P because it would be the same length but in the opposite direction. So we'll discuss what that means. It's actually going to be negative A as a vector. And Q to R would be the vector B that's defined in this question. So with a little quick exercise, I want to then express each of these journeys, so P to Q, Q to R, R to, T, R to S, in terms of the vectors that were defined. A and B. And hopefully by the end of all of these examples, you'll, you'll have an understanding of what the, the journey aspect of these, these vectors mean. Okay, so if we want to go from P to Q, it is clearly defined as the vector A. So P to Q would just be A. If we want to go from Q all the way to R, it's clearly defined as the vector B. So that is just the vector B. Okay, what about R to S? Well, there's no vector here, but we now need to think about what a vector is. A vector is the journey. Now, the journey has a distance, which is a magnitude, and a direction. From R to S, it looks like it's the same distance as from Q to P, because it's a parallelogram. But from R to S, we would be going in this direction. So, hopefully you can understand that the vector which goes from R to S the journey is actually the same as this vector A, but in the opposite direction. So R to S would be negative A, because it's the same distance, but it's in the negative direction, opposite direction. And then S to P, to go from S to P, this would be the same as vector B, but in the opposite direction. So this would be negative B. Okay, so now if we want to go from Q to P, so Q to P, this would just be the same as vector A, but in the opposite direction. So this would be negative A. If we want to go from P to S, that's going to be actually the opposite of S to P. Uh, so we already have S to P as negative B. The opposite of negative B is just B. And that's actually because P to S would be the, the exact same journey as Q to R. Okay, so this would just be B. 
Okay, the last two are a little bit more complex. If we want to go from P in travel all the way to R, we might need to add two vectors. And when we are adding vectors, we need to use the head to tail method. So if we want to go from P to R, we start here and we go up and we use this vector A where we have the head and then we need to connect the tail of the next vector. So to go from P to R, we're going to go from P up to Q. So P up to Q, which is the vector A. And then we're going to add the vector B, which is Q to R. So A plus B, the addition of these two vectors will get us from P all the way to R. And the last one, if we want to go from S to Q, S to Q, we want to go from here to here. We're going to need to go from S to P and then P to Q. And you might be thinking, oh, could we have gone from S to R and R to Q? And yes, you would be correct, but we'll get the same answer depending on which way we go. Okay, so to go from S to Q, we're going to go S to P first. Now S to P, this was negative B. We did this one here. So this will be negative B. And then from S to Q, S to P, we'll now go from P up to Q, which is just going to add the vector A. Now you can write this as A minus B because our rules for adding and subtracting ve vectors is just like adding and subtracting numbers uh, where you can move the positive one first. Okay, so this is a basic introduction into uh, what vectors look like if we have a diagram. These parallelogram questions are very common early in IB exams, uh, so I recommend you practice a few of these. Okay, good luck.